الله <laughs> Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is reported to have said that when two people meet out of love for Allah, they shake hands and they recite salat upon the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa the future and previous sins are forgiven before they part hands. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Mu'ad radiallahu alayhi wa reports from his father. He said that a gathering was overseen by the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu when it took place. And the honorable companions, the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi they were present. And yet they were very lucky. You know the companions, the, one of the fortunate things that they had is that any question came to the mind, they had the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu in front of them. You know, and again, before we continue, this again makes you think that when we have the scholars in front of us, do we think of any question that comes to our mind and ask them, we don't utilize the scholars. But the companions, they were very, very fortunate. They had the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi in front of them. They had a question in their mind. They presented the question and the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied with his infinite wisdom. He said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who possesses the most virtue from those who perform jihad? Those people who perform jihad, who has the most reward in that? And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, those who remember Allah in abundance. The companions asked another question. O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the most superior for those who fast? For example, if a hundred people fasted, who holds the most virtue amongst them? The Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, replied, those of you who remember Allah in abundance. The companions, they continue to ask similar questions. For example, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the most virtuous of those who pray? Who is the most virtuous from those who give zakat? And he asked about every form of worship and the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, each one of these things, he gave the same reply. Those of you who remember Allah in abundance. Those of you who remember Allah in abundance. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, عنه, he turned to Sayyidina Umar Farooq, he declared, he said to him, Omar, it seems like only those who remember Allah Azza wa are privy to every form of goodness. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes, O Abu Bakr, this is indeed the case. Those who remember Allah, those who make zikr of Him in abundance, attain every form of reward. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of my channel, those who perform good deeds are blessed, but the greatest amongst those are those who remember Allah Azza wa Jalla alongside it. We perform our salah, we fast, we read the Quran, we live our day-to-day -day routines, but do we remember Allah Azza wa Jalla? Do we think about the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jalla? Do we do the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla? And today, if we're honest with ourselves, we don't. We think we're in a, a rat race life that we're so busy that we haven't got time. You know, when we give you the blessing of reciting through the park upon the Prophet of Allah Azza wa Jalla, you say, oh, I ain't got time for this. But the problem is, is the one thing that we all have but we waste it, is time. We all have time. And, because, and there's many reasons why we do not do the zikr of Allah Azza We don't have that seriousness inside ourselves. For us, a lot of us, the namaz becomes a routine. It's almost as if it's an exercise that we have to do it. And unfortunately, there are many amongst us that don't even do that. When we say that, you know, the, the sincerity in your salah, when we talk about the ikhlas in your salah, when we think about what you're thinking during your salah, what you should be thinking during the salah, that is later. The majority was aren't even performing the salah. And that again is something to be pondering about. And another reason why we don't do the zikr of Allah Azza wa is because we're not interested. We're not interested in performing good deeds. You know, we're interested in making money. 
We're interested in looking for opportunities where we can make more money, make more money. You're on 10 pound on us, someone's offering you 12, someone's offering you 14, 16. You're on here, there and everywhere. You'd be on social media looking for deals, looking for things that you can buy cheap so you can sell and make a reward, make money on that. But are we looking for opportunities to attain the pleasure of Allah? Do we're not serious inside ourselves. I've said it many times before, I might look like a Muslim. I might dress like a Muslim. I might eat like a Muslim. But do I think like a Muslim? And that is where we are failing. We're not serious about our deeds, about our good deeds. We're not serious about refraining from sins. We're not serious about preparing for the hereafter. Something that's definitely going to happen. And we're habitual. You know, I said at the beginning, I pray that we become habitual in reciting the Pak upon the Prophet of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Unfortunately, we become habitual in wasting time. It's part of our daily routine. And that love of the world is entering in our heart. And because of that love of the world entering in our heart, we're forgetting our purpose. We're forgetting the reason why we were created. What are we born to be? We're born to die. That's what we're born to be. We're born to die. We do not know when that day will come. But we are all born to die. And that's what we need to con contemplate about. And as a result of that, we don't have the zikr of Allah Azawajal in our hearts. We don't have the zikr of Allah Azawajal on our tips. We're always thinking about the dunya. We're always spending our time in futile conversations. We're sitting in gatherings where backbitings happening, where slanderings happening, where lying's happening. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you sit in a gathering in which the zikr of Allah Azawajal doesn't take place, in which Drude Park is not recited upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that gathering, then that gathering because we're not said whether that gathering, you committed any sins in that gathering, but the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that that gathering can become a burden for you on the day of judgment. And it is up to Allah Azawajal whether He punishes you or forgives you for that gathering. We say we've got time, we haven't got time, but what are our gatherings like? There's no way of knowing, my dear Islam brothers, our tongues, this tongues, how many sins we commit with it. How many times a day do we do the zikr of Allah Azawajal and how many times during the day do we commit sins with this tongue? How many times are we lying, backbiting, swearing, doing all sorts of things and not thinking anything of it? We think so lightly of it. We don't think that we're going to be held accountable. This is again another thing that we need to get in our minds that you will be held accountable for it. You will be punished for it. And someone once said, he said that if you were together at the moment, on the, on the, on the face of this earth at the moment, there are more than 7 billion people. And I remember reading somewhere that someone said that at these 7 billion people, all the difficulties that they have, all the pain that they have, all the illnesses that they have, all the pain that they're feeling, if you were to put all that in one person, in one person, that pain, that grief that that one person would be facing would be less than the lightest punishment in the hellfire. But do we care? Are we bothered? Do we even think about it? Because that day is going to come. That day will come when we will be held accountable. And you will not have time then. You know, I've said it before that if you think about it, a person that comes here on a visa, he comes here on a work permit visa, a student visa, or whatever it is, what happens is, is when his visa expires, he becomes known as an illegal immigrant. And that illegal immigrant, if you look at him, you'll see that he reacts differently to everybody else. He's constantly looking over his shoulder because he knows that he's risking the time that someone will catch him. And when he catches him, He'll be taken to detention center, from the detention to the airport, and from the airport he'll be sent back home. And that person, he won't have time to go and empty the money out of his bank. That person won't have time to sell his house or sell his car. So that person, what he does is, every penny he earns, and he works as hard as he can, he sends it all back home. Because he knows when he gets caught, he hasn't got time. I'm not asking you today what you're sending back home. I'm asking you today, what are you sending forward? Because in the same way that that person is afraid that he might get caught, and he won't have time to do anything. We should have that fear inside us that the angel of death will catch us one day. And that person, there could be, you know, the, the, there could be, a, well, I don't know, I can't think of the word now, that the, the government could say, oh, okay, all those people that are legal, we'll make them legal. That law could happen. But the law is not going to change if Allah is on The angel of death will come to us. That time will come. And are we ready for that? Regarding doing zikr of Allah, Allah says in the Quran, O oh, believers, Remember Allah Azawajal abundantly. The Prophet of Allah said, Remember Allah Azawajal abundantly such that people call you insane. 
Did you see these people that when they're doing the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jalla in the ishtamas? I remember many, many years ago when in this area the first ishtama used to be, I think it used to be in Atkinson. I remember going to the ishtama when I was new in the environment of Dawah and I remember there was a, the ishtamas that took place. And I think like this, I think this is a wooden floor, isn't it? I remember the, the early ishtamas, the youngsters, they were so... When they were doing the zikr of Allah, the floor vibrated. The whole floor of, And I'm looking around thinking, these people... But this is, these people that were doing the zikr of Allah, they didn't care. They didn't care what people were thinking or people were saying. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was saying, Remember Allah is in abundance such that people call you insane. Let them call you insane. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Let them call you insane. So what? A companion came to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, The rulings of Islam have become too many for me. Please inform me of an action that I can adhere to firmly. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu said, Always keep your tongue moist with the zikr of Allah Azza wa Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Nimi, he comments beautifully on this by saying, It is possible that the questioner was asking about optional worship. It is the way he was saying, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa there are many optional wor worships to perform. Tell me that I can stick to firmly. To this, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa issued this reply. The goal is for a person to always keep some form of Allah's zikr on his tongue. May Allah Azza wa grant us the ability to do this. Here we're talking about those people that they would perform the fara'is. They would perform the five daily prayers. They would fast in the month of Ramadan. They would pay the zakat. They would go on the hajj when it was first upon them. And these people are asking, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa what can we do more? They wanted to do more. They wanted to find out what can we do to please our creator. And nowadays, our five daily salahs are a problem. They're a burden for us. The month of Ramadan is approaching and we're already looking at the timetable thinking, you know what, I'll wait, I'll make a decision when I get my work schedule. When I get my work schedule, I'll have a look at my work schedule and see when I'm doing overtime, when I'm working long hours, when I'm not going to be home for Sari Aftari and you know what, on that day, I won't bother fasting. We're already making that intention. We're already making that intention. And those of us that are not praying now, those are people that do not pray five times a day. What happens is, is some pe people are encouraging you, you're watching Madhuri channel, and on, the, on Madhuri channel you're constantly being encouraged to read your namaz five times a day. But what happens is we make intentions. We say, okay, you know what? The month of Ramadan is coming. In the month of Ramadan, I'll start reading my namaz five times a day. Yeah? Sounds like a good intention. But you know what intention you've made really? You've made an intention to sin from now to Ramadan. You made an intention to not pray from now to Ramadan. That's the intention that you made. It is better to, if you make, made, missed Salah in your life, if you missed hundreds, maybe thousands of Salah in your life, make a note of them, start performing them, make an intention that I will make up for all of my missed Salahs. That intention is better than you, for you. For if you were to die, having made that intention and doing your utmost to act upon it, that inshallah you will be rewarded. But think about that person that makes the intention that from now to Ramadan, I'm not going to read my Salah. From now to Ramadan, I'm not going to read the Quran. Is he if, and the angel of death comes to him, what intention is he making? And again, this intention, this intention is a whisper from shaitan. Shaitan doesn't want you to pray in the month of Ramadan. And shaitan is going to say to you, you know what, okay, I've got, him off, I've got him off the salah from the next month. When Ramadan comes, I'll sort him out then. You make the intention, you know what, during the month of Ramadan, I'll read the whole Quran, one para every day. I'll read one para every day. But I'm not going to start now. Shaitan says, okay, I've got him sorted as well. The month of Ramadan comes on the first day, you read a full para. On the second day, you read half. On the third day, you read a quarter. On the fourth day, you think, oh, I'm already behind schedule. It's pointless. I can't catch up now. Again, shaitan's won. Shaitan got you into that routine. Shaitan planned all this. And we fall into these traps. This is how we are wasting our time. This is how we're wasting this time on this dunya. And we're not doing the zikr of Allah. We're not performing these good deeds. When we talk about the zikr of Allah, what is the zikr of Allah? You can remember Allah Azza wa Jalla in many ways. Reading the Quran, that's the one thing that we should be doing. How many of us read the Quran? There was a person once, I don't know if you've heard this before. There was a person once, he had a khatam in his house. He had a khatam in his house and he invited the people of the community and he also invited the Imam Sahib as well. And after the khatam, one by one people started to leave. And the host, he was seen into the door. And the last person, as he was seeing the second to last person, and the last person was the Imam, 
as he was seeing off the second to last person, he had some money in his pocket that somebody had given him and he put it on the table. And he went out to see the second to last person. And as he was coming back, the imam was going to the door as well. So he saw the imam out. And when he came back in, he looked at the table, there was no money there. Straight away, he thought to himself, the imam. Straight away, he thought to himself, it's the imam. Who else? He was the last person here. I put it here before I went. I put it here before I went to the door. The only person in the room was the imam, so it must have been the imam. But obviously, he couldn't say anything to the imam. He couldn't say anything to anybody else because he didn't have more truth. So for the next year, he avoided that imam. He didn't want to meet him. He started reading the imams in a, in a different masjid, going to a different place. Never met the imam. If he saw the imam walking down the street, he turned and went down another street. But after a year, when the khatam again was to be happened in his house, the local community again said, Oh, have you not invited Imam Saab? You need to invite Imam Saab. A really good Imam. So out of pressure, peer pressure, he invited him. And when the Imam Saab came in, the Imam Saab approached him. And he said to him, For the last year, you've been avoiding me. For the last year, you've never given me salam. What is wrong? And the person, the host of the house, he opened up to him and said, You know, last year when you were here, what happened was, as the people were leaving, I put some money on the table. You were the last person. When I came back, the money wasn't there. And the imam started crying. The imam started crying. And so the person, the host, thought to himself, you know what, I caught him here. I proved him. He's the person that stole the money. And the imam said, look, I'm not crying because I stole the money. I did not steal the money. As you were seeing out the second to last guest before me, a gust of wind came. And it started blowing the money off the table. I took that money and I put it in your Quran and I put it on the shelf. The person went to the shelf, pulled open the Quran, opened it and the money was there. And the Imam was crying as he realized that for a whole year, that person had never read the Quran. Is that, what happened? Is that what's happening in our houses? When was the last time we opened the Quran? When was the last time we read the Quran? Are we again waiting for the month of Ramadan to read the Quran? Are we waiting for someone to die in our family to read the Quran? Is that what we're waiting for? You've got time to read all your social media messages. You've got time to read all your social media posts. You've got time for all of this. But no time for reading the Quran. Again, that whisper of shaitan. Oh, you haven't got time for this. You know, you can waste two hours on social media. They can't read the Qur'an for seven minutes. And then we wonder why we are where we are. There are many forms of performing zikr. Doing the zikr of Allah, doing tasbih of Allah, thinking about Allah, contemplating about Allah, looking around you and thinking about the creation of Allah. Just thinking about the creation is a form of zikr. Thinking about the blessings of Allah, thinking about the blessings that Allah has given you. The fact that I have sight, that I have tongue, that I have ears, and all of these blessings that Allah has given All of these... Contemplating, thanking Allah are a form of zikr. He's saying to me, I haven't got time for this. And nowadays we talk about in a lot of companies, people are talking about multitasking. That they want you to be able to do two things at the same time. In your job description, you have to do this and you have to do that. There are very few people that, you know, the job is with the tongue. Yes, there are, you know, call centers. Yes, there are people that use the tongues all the time. But the majority was not using our tongues all the time. Can you not be working in a factory and doing the zikr of Allah Azawajal? Can you not be driving a car and doing the zikr of Allah Azawajal? Can you not be working in a shop and doing the zikr of Allah Azawajal? Can you not be working at a computer and doing the zikr of Allah? Yes, we can. Just have excuses. That's all we've got. We've just got excuses. We can't justify this. We just make excuses. And you can make a fool out of me and say, Oh brother, I'm so busy. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. I ain't got time for this. That's not going to wash on the Day of Judgment. We make excuses for everything. I remember going to a solicitor's office in Manchester. And we sat with him and he said to me that, we're talking, you know, about reading your salah, that you should read your salah. And he said, yeah, brother, I'm a bit weak on this. He said, but one thing I've realized. He said, you know, you'll realize this. You know, when you get a phone call of someone, you get a phone and you look at the phone and you think, oh, this is a quick one. Yeah? I'll have this answer within two minutes. And so you'll answer it. But they, oh, no, not him. This is going to be a 40 minute. I ain't got time for this, yeah? And so what you'll do, you delay and you'll let him send you a message. He said, look, in the office, we get these calls and we know. Straight away, we know how long this is going to be. He said, but if a person rings, and I think it's a two-minute call or a five-minute call, and it goes on for 45 minutes, I don't mind. Why? It's my job. 
So in, afterwards, I put the phone down, and I'm not bothered that rather than five minutes, I've spent 45 minutes. But when it comes to Salah, all of a sudden I've got no time. All of a sudden I haven't got 10 minutes. All of a sudden I haven't got five minutes. He said, we have a room in our office where we read our Salah, and I haven't got time to go there. He says, I know that's an excuse. But who are you lying to? You're lying to yourself. We're lying to ourselves that I haven't got time to go and read my Salah. That's who we're lying to. On the day of judgment, you ask, why didn't you read your Salah? Oh, I was too busy answering the phone. I had a hospital appointment, I had a doctor's appointment, I had this to do, I had that to do. These excuses won't wash. And as Muslims, what has happened now is we live our life in such a way that our deen has become our hobby. You know, a lot of people, people that know me personally know that I, I like, you know, cars and I bought an old car to renovate, to restore this old car. I bought it about six years ago. I put it in, you know, my parents' yard, I put a sheet over it and I've never got around to it, but it's my hobby. And one of these days, I'll get right to it. But our, our, our deen has become like this. If I've got time, I'll read my salah. If I've got time, I'll go to the month. If I've got time, I'll read the Quran. If I've got time, I'll fast in the month of Ramadan. If I've got time, I'll perform the Hajj. If, where's this if come from? Your deen is not a hobby. Your deen should be your life. Everything else should revolve around your deen. But unfortunately, we don't listen. And because of that, our deen has become our hobby. Hajj is further upon us. And we think, you know what, I need to get that kitchen extension done first. Hajj is further upon us, and we say, you know what, I need to get my daughters married first. Hajj is further upon us, you know what, I need to get that koti back home first. We're making all of these excuses. I humbly request all the people that are here today and watching on this channel, if, if Hajj is further upon you, if Hajj is further upon you, please, for your own sake, make the intention today that I will perform the Hajj as soon as possible. If it is further upon you, don't delay this. Don't delay that Allah Azza wa Jalla give you that money. And that's why it becomes further upon you. Those people that don't have that money, it's not further upon them. But Allah Azza wa Jalla give you that money, it is further upon you now. So don't make any excuses. Because that money was given to you by Allah Azza wa Jalla. And you will be questioned. One of the questions that you will be asked is, what did you do with the wealth that Allah gave you? What are you going to say on that day? I wanted an upgrade on my car. I needed a new kitchen. I needed a new sofa. I fancied getting a plot of land back home. Is that the answer that we're going to go with on that day? Do you think you're going to be rewarded by having a massive kitchen extension and not performing your hajj? No, you're not. And you know that. So again, who are we lying to? We're lying to ourselves. We're lying to ourselves. And this is what we need to think about it. And you look at the pious people of the past. You look at how they lived their lives. And the way they did zikr of Allah is amazing. I was reading that Sayyidina Rabia Basri, Ramatullah she, she had a dream. And in this dream, she saw a beautiful tree. And in the tree, there was fruit, sizes of the fruit and the colors of the fruit. She said, I'd never seen that fruit before. And she asked, who is this tree for? And the reply from the unseen thought came, that this is the tree and the fruit of the zikr that you continually perform. And as she was going around the tree, she saw a few pieces of fruit on the floor. And she asked, would it not be better if this fruit was on the tree? It's fallen from the tree. Why is it fallen from the tree? And the reply from the unseen came that while she was performing the zikr of Allah, for a few moments, you thought about the bread that you adored and whether it was going off or not. And because of that, this fruit has fallen from the tree. And when I read that, I got scared. Because I thought to myself, what do we think about when we're reading our salah? What does our man, mind wonder when we're reading our salah? We think about everything when we're reading our namaz. We remember all the bills that we got to do. We remember all the chores that we got to do. We remember all the people that we've got to see. We remember all the messages that we need to listen to. All the messages that we need to reply to. We remember all of our tasks. Everything we remember. We start thinking about them things. We're planning them things. And if we're in the masjid then the imam starts taking too long, we've got a, a quick look at the clock thinking, you know, it's taking a little bit long now. I need to finish quickly. And this happens during the Taravi, especially we're looking at the clock saying, oh, he did four akats in four minutes. That means he's going to be finished in this amount of time. And we're planning that time. We're not concentrating on our salah. And then we wonder why we are where we are. You're performing the salah, you're reading the Quran, then at least try to get as much reward from it. Try and increase that sincerity. In I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Allah, give us that sincerity. 
But at least try and strive for it. We are, again, this is shaitanic whisper, oh, you can't be like them. You can't have a mindset like them. You'll never be able to achieve their status. At least strive to have that status. Try and remove them thoughts from your mind. You know, when the dua takes place, what do we say at the beginning of the dua? We always say to people, look, for these few moments, for this period of time, try and remove all worldly thoughts. Why? So that you can concentrate on the task in hand. This is why we say, so you can concentrate on the task in hand and be rewarded for that task. Just think what our tree would be like. And inshallah, we're going to perform the zikr today. What, are, what is our tree going to be like? What are we going to be thinking about during the zikr? If Allah Azza wa Jalla is going to reward us with a tree with fruit, what is that tree going to be like? What does our mind wonder during the zikr? Many of us get our mobile phones out during the zikr, they can start answering the messages during the zikr. We're looking at the time during the zikr. We're remembering, oh, it's coming to the end now. I need to get this takeaway on the way home during the zikr. We remember all of these things. This is what state we're in. Sheikh Abul Hassan, Nuri Ramatullah Tala, he was a, a saint of widespread reputation. And he would be visited in droves by people seeking his blessings. On one occasion, two dervishes departed from their homes to visit him. One of the said dervishes, he had this gift that Allah Azza wa gave him, that he could understand the language of animals. And when they entered the city of the Sheikh, they saw two cats talking to each other. And the dervish who understood their language became upset after listening to them. Explaining what he had heard, he said that the cat told the other that Sheikh Abul Hassan Nuri Ramutullah had passed away. The dervishes, they, they were saddened by this news and they decided that they would go and participate in the funeral. When they reached the Sheikh's house, they were amazed to see the Sheikh open the door for them. They both were amazed and confused as they had just heard the cat say that he had passed away. And he looked to their faces and he realized something was wrong. And he said, what is the matter? Why do you look shocked? And the Darvishis, they explained of what they'd heard from the cats. And then the Sheikh, he said, the cats spoke the truth. I was inattentive. Inattentive in the zikr of Allah Azzawajal for a moment. And at that time, announcement was made in the heavens and the earth that Abul Hassan has passed away. The entirety of creation except jinn and humans heard this. I was inattentive for a moment. But the guy had been given the bounty of performing the zikr of Allah Azzawajal again. What is our standing? What is our standing? It is mentioned in the Quran. And whoever has blinded himself from the remembrance of the most gracious, we appoint a devil upon him that he stays with him as his companion. The Prophet of Allah said that the trunk of shaitan is upon the heart of a man. When a person remembers Allah Azzawajal, the trunk withers. When he becomes negligent of remembering Allah Azzawajal, shaitan makes his heart a morsel. It is reported that Imam Abu Qasim Kushari once befriended a Muslim jinn. One day they were both sat in a masjid and with other people also present. Can you see something? The Muslim jinn asked. Imam Kushari replied, Yes, I see the people sitting here. The jinn then asked, Can you see something else? The Imam replied by saying, No, the jinn placed his hand over the Imam's eyes for a moment and then he moved it away and said, Now look. Imam Kushari looked towards the people and found black crows sitting on their heads. These crows had long hair covering their faces, some up to the knees, some up to the eyes, and others to the forehead. Imam Kushari Ramatullah saw this shocking scene and he said, what is happening? And the Muslim jinn then recited the following verse of the Quran in which Allah Azza says, and whoever is blinded himself from the remembrance of Allah Azza we appoint a devil upon him that stays as his companion. The jinn explained that these are devils stationed over them. A devil in the form of a crow sits on the heads of the heedless. When they perform the zikr of Allah Azza the devil runs away. Use another channel, where do we stand? I mean, I can carry on telling you and I can relate to you. There's many, many blessings here of how we should perform the zikr of Allah Azawajal, how we should please our Rabb by performing the zikr of Allah Azawajal. But unless we change our mindset, unless we realize what is happening to us, then again, we're never going to succeed. We need to change how we think. Because you will heard the Imam Sahib tell you many, many times that we need to pray our salah. The Imam Sahib will tell you this is the punishment for salah. We all know this. Then why don't we do it?
You know, one of the amazing things is, mashallah, we have a, a scholar with us, mashallah, this particular scholar that you have here, you're very blessed, mashallah, he's the oldest scholar in the UK. And I remember many, many years ago when I first came into the Mahal of Dawat Islam, he was a scholar that had traveled to Pakistan to perform the Dars Nizami. You know, he was one of our pioneers of our Jami here. But other than the scholars that are sat here today, if you were to ask anybody a thick question of inheritance, that someone has four sons, two daughters, two brothers, two sisters, what is the inheritance? They won't know it. Some of us will, very few will. But if I was to ask the people here today, and the people that are sat at home today, even the children that are here today above the age of 9, 10, is Salah Farz upon you? Nobody will say no. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that Salah is Farz upon you. So why are we not performing it? Why are we negligent in our Salah? Why are we negligent in fasting in the month of Ramadan? Why are we making excuses for not paying the zakat? Why are we making excuses for not performing the hajj? And we know, we all know that salah is fard upon us. We all know that fasting in the month of Ramadan is fard upon us. We all know that if you have a certain amount of money, then zakat is fard upon us. And if you don't know about the zakat ruling, then come to the scholars. Say, I have this amount of money. I've got this amount of gold. I've got this amount of silver. I've got this, I've got this. These are my debts. This is the zakat. And he'll tell you. He will tell you, he'll sit here all night if need be. He will sit here and guide you and tell you. But the problem is, is you need to come and ask him these questions. You know, there's a saying in English, you can bring a horse to water, but you cannot force him to drink it. We have the scholars here. We can tell you to come and sit with the scholars, but unless you don't sit with them and ask these questions. But you know what happens? We have this mufti inside our heart. This mufti inside our heart doesn't want to ask questions because we're afraid. Because if the scholar says you have to pay 500 pounds a cart, oh, I don't want to pay that. It's better if I think to myself, I don't have to pay any. But once I've heard the answer, and this is why we don't go to the scholars, because we're afraid of the answer that we're going to get. Amir al-Sunnat in the Madani Muzaki, he tells us that whatever business you're doing, whatever work you're doing, get it scanned by the scholars, go and see them. Again, we're afraid of doing that. And you know what, if I go to them, if I go to the mother, he's going to say to me, no, 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 that's haram, don't do it. So it's better I don't go to them. You know inside yourself that what you're doing is wrong, but you're lying to yourself. And as Muslims, we need to change this mindset before it's too late. Stop making excuses for our shortcomings. Stop making excuses for not praying our salah. Stop making excuses for not fasting. Stop making excuses for not calculating your zakah. Stop making excuses for not performing the hajj that is further upon you. Stop making excuses for all the other sins that you're committing. We make excuses for the sins that we commit. Oh, it's because of my friends. You know, they're all lying, they're all cheating, they're all swearing. It's normal. I've heard this as well. Well, everybody's doing it, so what's wrong with I doing it? Everybody jumps in the fire, are you going to jump in the fire? Don't make excuses to yourself. You're lying to yourself. You can make a fool out of me, you can say, brother, oh, it's because of this, it's because of that. And I go, okay, okay, fair enough. But do you think that words are going to work on the Day of Judgment? They're not. So before it's too late, make a change. Make a change in your life. You know when you talk to athletes, athletes have what they call a personal best. You know if someone's a weightlifter, they'll say my personal best is 50 kilos or 60 kilos or whatever it is. And what they try to do is every day, they try to improve on the personal best. They try and run quicker, lift more, jump higher, whatever it is they do. As Muslims, you should always have your personal best as well. What was your personal best Ramadan? What was your best Ramadan that you had? Make this year your personal best. That my best Ramadan was, I read one Quran. My best Ramadan was, I didn't perform all the Taraweeh, but this year I'll improve on that. Make it your personal best. And as Muslims, not only the month of Ramadan we should make our personal best, every day should be our personal best. Every day should try and improve. We try and improve financially, we try and make more money daily. We try and struggle and strive to get something in our dunya. Why are we not struggling and striving to improve ourselves, getting our personal best? If you do the zikr of Allah, you do the zikr a hundred times, make it 120, make it 100, and try and improve on your personal best. A sportsman, he's never happy just performing the same every time. If he lifts 50 kilos, he's not happy just lifting 50 kilos. He wants to lift 55, he wants to lift 60, and so on and so on. Why from us when we say, oh, well, I've done my tasbih, I've done 100, I'm not going to do more. Why? Don't you want to improve on that as well? You read the Quran three ayats a day, oh, I should be reading fourth, I should read the Rukhu, I should read the Spara. Improve on this. Set yourself goals. And what happens is during the month of Ramadan, yes, a lot of people set themselves goals. 
But what happens is they set them just for the month of Ramadan. And again, this is again, as you shut down that whisper. You don't have to read the Quran, read it in Ramadan. You don't have to read Yamaz, read it in Ramadan. You don't have to do any zikr, do it in Ramadan. We're talking about zikr today, and many of us will be making, you know what? During the month of Ramadan, I'm going to do a zikr 1,000 times a day. I'm going to do 500 through the park a day. I'm going to do this. Why Ramadan? Why not now? Imam Zali, he said that we only have three days in our life. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow might not come. Today is the day. And Imam Ghazali, he went further. He said, not only three days in our life, we only have three breaths in our life. Gone. Aniwala. Or up. This breath I have now, this is the only breath that you've got. Then breaths have gone. And so as Muslims, we need to make a change. You hear on Madri channel that Amir al says that the war against Shaitan will continue. Shaitan ke khilaf jang, he says it. What is this war? Is this war that I gather all the people here today, give them all a baseball bat, and go on Wally Range and say, come on, we're going out. That's not the war against Shaitan. The war against Shaitan, and I'm looking here, I can't see it, is tomorrow morning at Salat al-Fajr. That's the first battle against Shaitan. And the question is, are you going to win or Shaitan going to win? And only you can make that decision. Tomorrow morning at Fajr, is Shaitan going to win or are you going to win? You have to make that decision. Zuhur, the next battle. Asr, the next battle. Maghrib, the next battle. Isha, the next battle. These are all battles against Shaitan. And tomorrow morning, if you do not get up for Fajr, when you get up to have your breakfast, when you get up to get to go to work, think to yourself that this morning, I let Shaitan win. That's not a thought we want. That's not a thought that Muslims should have. We should always have this mindset that no matter what happens, I will not let shaitan win. I will not shaitan, let shaitan entice me to commit these sins. I will make sure that I read my namaz five times a day. I will push shaitan even further away while doing the zikr of Allah Azawajal. I will push shaitan even further away by reading the Quran. I will push shaitan even further away by reading the Quran in the house as a family, reading it to them. These are all the, the weapons that you have. Our deen has given us these weapons. Our deen has given us these weapons against shaitan. You know, we hear in this country that if you want to get insurance on a house, you need five lever locks. Our deen has given us five locks to protect our iman. In this country, they say if you want a better insurance policy, then you need seven lever, nine lever. Our deen has given us more locks. You want locks for your iman, I'll give them you. The hajjat, chash, ishraq, awabin, reen the Quran, zikr, these are all locks of your iman. You protect your house, you protect your car, but do you protect your iman? I locked my car before I came here. It's outside, I locked it. I didn't leave it open. You probably didn't leave it open. The first thing I did when I got out of the car was lock it. Do we lock our Iman? Do we protect our Iman? Do we safeguard our Iman? Do we even think about protecting our Iman? Are we aware that there are people of the past that have, Amir Sunnah has written a booklet on this of causes of a bad end? What is a bad end? A bad end is that you die with that Iman. You may be the most pious person in the room today, but you should always still have this feeling inside you that I may die with that Iman. What are you doing to protect your Iman? Are you aware of those things that could cause you to lose your Iman? Not bothered. We're aware of where we might lose more money and be paying extra tax. We're aware of where we might be paying extra for our gas bills and electrics bills. We're aware of where we're going to get cheap insurance. We're aware of where we're going to be paying more for our gas, electricity and Wi-Fi, whatever it is. We're aware of all of those things. What we're not aware of is, is how to protect our Iman. Of the Islam brothers and viewers of Muslim channel, I pray to Allah Azza wa Jalla for May Allah Azza wa Jalla forgive me, and I pray to Allah Azza wa Jalla that Allah give me and you the ability to think, to think as we should think. If I was to make an announcement that on a certain night whoever turns up to the masjid with proof of the debts, I'll give them a check. I'll write off your debts. Whatever your debt is, five pound, five thousand pound, five hundred pound, I'll write your check. How many people would come to the masjid? We're willing to come to the masjid to get our debts forgiven. But we're not willing to come to the masjid to get our sins forgiven. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jalla for sending it on me. Allah Azza wa Jalla forgive me. May Allah Azza wa Jalla give me and you the ability to think about what I've said and act upon what I've said and pass on to others as well. Amin bi jahin nabi wa amin. Sallu ala al-habib.